and welcome to another edition of Comedy Corner here on ACTN. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. And you know we always bring something from a community or a person in the community who is doing something positive to uplift our community in Trinidad and Tobago. And joining me on set today is none other than the lovely Stacey Ann Beckles. Now, you would have seen Stacey Ann some time um, back here on ACTN and you know of a story. Now, this is a different Stacey Ann Beckles. It's a Stacey Ann Beckles who have come out out of incarceration at the women's prison and she's doing a marvelous job. She's actually the owner of her own NGO, which is giving back something to women in this country. Stacey is now the, the, the head of the Women of Transformation. It's a non-profit organization. And I want to go a step further to ask you viewers who are viewing this program that Stacey is in need of assistance, any form of assistance. And during the course of this interview, you will understand and you will know why she needs this, this assistance. So, Stacey it's a pleasure. Hi, thank you. And Good day. Welcome to East Thank you for now, having me. Now, as I mentioned, and I know it's no secret, uh, yes. you were once incarcerated. Yes. That's behind you now. You have come out now and you have formed Women of Transformation, an NGO. Tell us about this NGO. Well, George, uh, Women of Transformation is an NGO I found most needed in our country, among other NGOs. I, whilst being incarcerated, I would have felt the need to help our women in this society in the form of finding their full potential. Uh, our young ladies have realized, even whilst being incarcerated, their self-esteem was not low, but it was almost as high as the sky. They had no... Um, no remorse some of them some of them had no morals they didn't even know what was moral values so my NGO empowers young ladies to grown women in finding their full potential bringing out the empowerment in them bringing out the leadership skills in them building their character character is always first George you know it was character that I did not understand what would have led me to a life of crime because when you do not know yourself and what are your purposes, you are mm -hmm. fall into the hands of anything. So Women of Transformation is an NGO that helps empower young girls, um, both social, private, um, school-wise, education-wise, help empower them through workshops, seminars, mentorship, mm -hmm. and other um, stuff that will help a woman to find herself, you know, again, being a reverend and a minister of the gospel, I don't forget God. Mm -hmm. So Women of Transformation is also founded on the moral values of Christ Jesus, our mm -hmm. King. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what we do. And that's what myself and my directors and others who are on board, we go into various schools. Um, I work with girls at St. Jude's, girls of my community. You know, they say charity begins at home. Mm -hmm. And I show them where they can prevent. Uh, right now I'm charting on a course called the Harm Reduction course you know helping the girls of the village girls of St. Jude's and other girls that will come into my pathway reduce the risk of going to prison or even to the grave mm -hmm. now I know that um, in this life there are so many challenges that we face yes was the experience challenging for you coming out of prison and uh, settling back into society and starting this um, NGO, how was the, the transformation from coming out of the prison back into life and starting this, um, this, this, this transformation? Because you know the stigma of these people out there, once you come out of prison, they label you a convict, you know, and you now have to go to people now to seek, to convince people now that, oh, I want to start this organization, I want help here, I want help there. How challenges was that for you? It was challenging and still is, George, mm. to say, and like for instance, when I first wanted to start this NGO, I was confused. I was crying on my bed one night and I said, God, you know, I'm invited to speak all over as the ex-offender with a testimony. Mm. However, I know the Bible says God will make way for you through with your testimony. You will go to kings and kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, give me a name. The name I had had already gone. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a second name. And he said to me, you cannot transform one 
with just words, but you can transform them by your life being a living testimony. So right then, then I started overcoming because there were times I will go to certain companies to ask for um, like slippers or t-shirts or because even in my community of the San Juan area I encounter a lot of young girls their mothers will come to me or their fathers who are single parents you know my daughter don't have this for school I, I heard you on TV or something mm. and then even where I, I do my little workshop with girls in the St. Jude's area where St. Jude's see about their girls but mm. I who do a course with them like to give them something sometimes they have a need some of those girls have no one visiting them at mm. St. Jude's the government does do their part, but they would like a little extra. Mm -hmm. And I like to help. But now coming into the Christmas season, I've seen where there is still a great challenge because I have ventured out to nearly every snack company in Trinidad and still up to this date, I'm waiting on approval. Mm -hmm. You know, a few have stretched their hand and I thank God for the companies who have stretched their hand to help me to treat these girls mm -hmm. later on in December. And I'm still trusting God for more to come in. But it is a challenge. Even when I speak sometimes, mm -hmm. um, it's emotional for me because in speaking, I'm getting healing still. And I'm healing others because I'm teaching them about the character traits that will help prevent you mm -hmm. from being in a place where I was or even with the grief. Okay. What has person taught you that you are going to take now and bring it into this NGO and pass it on to young women, so enabling young women not to really or try to avoid going down that road of um, requiring. Well, what prison has taught me is patience. That's one of the first thing, because you got to wait for everything in prison. you got to wait until they say on the line to get your dad. you got to wait until they say your visitor is here. you got to wait until they say the bus is ready to go to the clinic. you got to wait. You can't override. You got to wait until they open the gate to even go um, get things, wash, wash your linings. You have to wait. That was one of the major things. Patience. Also, prison has taught me to forgive. Mm -hmm. I was very ruthless back then. Forgiveness wasn't part of my thing. I know I was kind. You're living a life of crime. You helped this one. You helped that one because it was easy. Mm -hmm. But prison taught me forgiveness, forgiving my family, forgiving those I would have been hurt by seeking forgiveness for those I would have hurt. And um, it also taught me, last but not least, to love even those who don't even deserve love. Mm -hmm. Because whilst being incarcerated, I would have come into contact with women who are very different to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had to love them because you are put into the same cell with them by four sometimes, and you have to love them. You grow to accept people for who they are, where they're coming from, and what their status is pertaining to the crime status, why they are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. So now I bring that to the girls outside who I encounter every day. Forgive, mm -hmm. have patience, mm -hmm. obey, listen, wait, forgive your mommy, forgive your daddy, forgive those you would have been hurt by because I come over a lot of abused girls who is in my community and um, they go through a lot and they come out and confide in me because they would have known my testimony, known the life I came out from, and didn't just come out, but come out victorious. Mm -hmm. So that is what I bring to the table from what I've learned whilst being incarcerated for the past five years and then mm -hmm. back then. Now tell me about the school tour. Okay. Well, recently I was on a school tour. I was honored to be a part of the Abyssinia journey. It's a journey where Muslim and Christians come together to bring peace within the schools Speaking about our uh, experience, myself, Pastor Gary Grant, and Iman M.T. Masalwazi, he's the Iman for the YTC um, Center for Boys. And he would have been a part of, he's the founder, sorry, of the Roots Foundation. He was given the contract or the opportunity, um, which is funded by the U.S. Embassy and endorsed by Citizen Security Program, a program off of national security to, to carry on this tour. And he found it fit to bring women of transformation, see you myself, mm -hmm. on board, being the only female sharing her life's journey through crime, you know, as we say, from prison to praise, prison to the pulpit. So the three of us, along with a psychologist, Kurt, who is a psychologist, Mr. Kurt Pear, our photographer, and another young lady who does the music, she gives her testimony through music, mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful journey. It's the Abyssinia journey. We have touched 20 schools and one community center. South, a lot of schools in South we have touched. 
um, in the western part of our country, central, and of about one in the north, which we are having a part two next year, and we'll be heading mostly to north, south, and mm. the hotspot schools. Mm. It has been a journey of change. As you know, Abyssinia, the name would have been Ethiopia before, mm. and it's the story of Christians and Muslims. Because, you know, the theme was that Abyssinia, because the thing is now in our country, the war, Rasta City Muslim, mm. we sought to bring an end to that in the school area. And that's what the journey was How about. What was the response from the students? Wow, it was overwhelming. We had girls crying, boys asking to speak to Pastor Gary and Mr. Altima, who is head of the tour. Mm. You know, the boys would want to know how was their prison life, because they both too would have had a prison mm. journey. And the girls, oh, it was emotional for me, because I saw my daughter, I saw my nieces, I saw my sister, mm. I saw mothers in the crowd who would come to the school and sit down to hear the, the, the um, whole hour and a half session. and. Mm come to ask questions. I had very intimate questions from young girls that I would have transferred to the psychologist because it's so emotional yeah. to hear our young girls in our nation's school going through so much, but yet they find it hard to go to their guidance counselor because trust is a serious thing. Mm. And they found the need to trust Stacey Ann. Because mm. when they see and hear what Stacey Ann is saying, mm. it is in their era and their time now. Okay. I know we have to take a short break, but when we return, um, I want to touch a bit on the NGO itself, you know, yes. because um, we need the viewing public, you know, to get a full view of yeah. what this organization is, um, is really all about, what mm -hmm. it's going to be um, doing for the young women of, of Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. and uh, the NGOs. That it, it, it is something that we need presently because when we look at our female in Trinidad and Tobago right now, yes. we are seeing young girls going down a road that is 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 either going to lead to yes. either incarceration or you know being a the single grave. mother or yes. even the grave, yes. right? Or even you know a life that you can just be be, be totally scarred. Yes. So we need or it's just like this, and we need people to assist because. You are new. You started this as far as August of this year. Yes. But the, the, the birth has been long before. Yes, it so, was. Right. So when we come back, we will touch a bit about on those Yes. Things. Viewers, this is Comedy Corner here on ACTN. Today we are talking with Stacey Ann Beckers, the Director for Women of Transformation and New NGO. We'll be right back after the short break. changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. When, what I, my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Holy by not tell me now. In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David and I'm your host. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome back. Welcome back viewers and Stacey, before we took the break, I mentioned that Women of Transformation started in August yes. of this year, but the birth was long before that. Yes. Did it start in the prison itself or when you came out and you were reflecting on your past and what you can do to get back into society? Actually, George, it started about 
four weeks after I got the news that my common law husband was murdered before I came out of prison. Because you would have known that um, 10 weeks before I was released from prison, he was killed. Yeah, well, yeah. So right after I got the news of his murder, I lay down in the cell crying and saying, what can I do to stop other women from going through what I am feeling right mm -hmm. now? I took no note of it. And when I got released, I lived with my pastor, who's now deceased herself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said, well, I want to be a voice. I got the job at Vision on Mission. Um, a wonderful CEO, Mr. Wayne Chance, you know, he also was an offender, you would know. Yes, yes. So he gave me the opportunity to share his platform mm -hmm. being a case worker at Vision on Mission. And in getting that opportunity, when we go to the prisons of different areas, you will hear women coming to me with issues. And, you know, they will come to him, but they will gravitate. You know, a woman will gravitate to another woman. And I mm -hmm. saw the need. And I said, you know, I need to do something. Not just, I'm not about money. Because I realized in my time, no one, there was no NGO to help me. There was no NGO came in Curep Junior Sec where I went. There mm -hmm. was no NGO came in the neighborhood and gave me a shoe. Mm -hmm. There was no NGO. They had one or two good church people who blessed me. But when they bless you today, you can't go back to them tomorrow. There was no NGO that I could have run to when I was raped. Mm -hmm. There was none. Mm -hmm. So I want to be the NGO that a young girl could call me and say, Miss Beckles, I'm going to talk to you today. Please, just somebody to listen. No one listened to me when I was raped. Mm -hmm. No one listened to me when I walked into a life of crime. They just looked at the gain. No one looked at the loss, which is great for me even now, mm -hmm. emotionally. I want young girls not to go through what I go through. Had to be at the clinic every week to get medication because you would have messed around the wrong guy. I want girls to realize you are a queen. It doesn't matter if you're from Marabella, the Beatum, Cedrus, the Bago, wherever you're from, you are a queen. And I want this NGO to be the one to let young girls know you are great, empowering one girl at a time, building character, building self-awareness, doing the self-determination theory. That's what I run with, where they will have the, the conscious decision to see where they are great and where they can still work on. No one is a loser. And that's what society do. You do wrong, we put you away, you do this. But I thank God even for the prison system because even in my mess, God brought a great message. Now, you're planning a Christmas treat for the girls, yes. the youngest in your community, yes. right? You are in need of certain things. Yes. What, um, I know that we're going to um, put up the number for the account at Republic Bank. Yes. Right? So anyone can you know, send donations to this um, account. But what do you need? Well, I'm trying to treat the girls both on a, um, toiletries, food. You know, it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I realized something. And these something, are the girls from? My community and both St. Jude's. Right. Now, the girls from St. Jude's, I want to make it very clear. The government sees about them. Some of them have families, some don't. Mm -hmm. So I have a class I do every two Saturdays or three Saturdays with about 60 to 80 girls. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's 60 because they go home, some go. Mm -hmm. Where I want to treat them, I want to know what it is to be loved in spite of making a mistake. Because God loved me. And whilst being incarcerated, um, George, a lot of people gave me, even Pastor Sammy, may his soul rest in peace, yes, they would yes. come and treat us that at Mother's yeah. Day, mm -hmm. make us feel like the rose Actually, they that's, gave that's us. that's the first time I came in contact with you. Yes, and yeah. they will come and pour, prison fellowship will come, Angel Tree. People showed love to us even though we were, uh, were crime people, we mm -hmm. were criminals as the society say. Mm -hmm. I want to show the girls of my community and other communities I visit, mm -hmm. Tunapuna, Rima, any home I pass by and the girls of San Juan, Pitigu, you know, let me bless you. Now, there are some boys in the mix I bless too. There are 10 boys I help see about. And, you know, there are mothers who are incarcerated, who have children, who still corresponds with me. Mm. Now you go in, you know, my daughter needed this, and I will jump out. And mm. I don't go to the social media and do all this to show what I've done. Yeah, yeah. God is not a showing of God mm. in that mm. way. Mm. But I need help in getting snacks, you know, um, grapes, apples, the things you will want to taste for mm. Christmas. Also, mm. I'm venturing and feeding the poor mm. on Christmas morning. Okay. I've realized that no matter what I've had on Christmas morning, whilst being incarcerated, I was lonely. I had no one to say, I love you more than, you know, that's the office. And, but no one really, you have to eat. So your food was there, but someone really coming. So that's another project I want to get help with. In all the donations I would receive, you know, I'm putting everything together. I'm helping the girls of the community of San Juan Pitibu 
to the Pune, um, even as far as Arima, there are some girls I deal with there, very small people, mm. and also the poor. Mm. The Bible says that God is um, father to the fatherless and he's a husband to the widow. He cannot come off his throne. We have to do it. Mm. So by people sowing into this, the life of women of transformation, they're not sowing into my life. They're sowing into the lives of young girls, mothers, who, you know, can't go and get a food card. Mm -hmm. who, who can't just go into Massey and say, can you give me something? And they're not asking for much, some rice, something. I just want to do that because I would have come from a place like that. Mm -hmm. And people stretch their hands to me. So I want to give back even to the poor, fix a lovely box, some ham, this. And I want to do that. It's the desire of God that we give back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put up the account number and the telephone number. So anyone who is viewing this program, of a good cause, please assist uh, Stacey and Beckham. Stacey, all that you are doing here, yes. right? All this work that you're doing here, seeing about the girls in your community, the girls in St. Jude, you are a single mother. Yes, I am. You have a young daughter. Yes. How do you manage? Well, Abigail, the woman of God, she is much on board with me. She loves when we go to St. Jude. She loves when we give. Sometimes she has to tell me, Mommy, um, Give away that no. Oh gosh. And I say, yes, well, I'm trying to see who to give it to. Mommy, just give it away. She tells me who to give the things to. And I teach her that God says that we cannot love only who love us. Because she thinks you can only give who you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm teaching her um to give those you don't know. And that's the greater love. Mm -hmm. And um it's challenging. Sometimes in the night, people are calling my phone, I'm sleeping. Just talk to my daughter and she crying and she goes, I'm talking about big women who call me for their 20 year old daughter who's going through something sometime mm -hmm. with their fiance, their husband. But I always lead them to the scripture. And if they are, cause I have a lot of non-believers that call me, but I am not prejudiced to anyone. Yeah, yeah. But it is challenging sometimes. I have to leave my daughter and head out to this area where I won't carry her. But I always have someone there to look after her for me. But it's all for a good cause. Mm -hmm. It feels good knowing I'm going to save this young girl from the grave. I'm going to save her from being a murderer, which is abortion. I'm against abortion. Coming from a personal place, I'm against it. So I'm going to save a lot of teenage pregnancy. And how I'm going to do that? By sharing my testimony along with others I will bring, I bring on board and will bring on board to help build character first, other seminar workshops. And a lot is happening. I'm looking to partner with United Nations soon. Um, they have the 17 goals. You know, gender is one. And for me, we have to help our young girls. They are the next generation. They are the mothers, the backbone of this country, women. This organization, this NGO rather, is very young. It is. Where would you like or what are the plans you have for this organization for the next two or three years? Where would you like it to reach? Where would you like it? What would you like to accomplish? To be honest, George, my heart goes out to girls who will come up to me and say, um, I would like to get a nice place to stay because I'm being hurt at home, whether verbal or physical or sexual. I would like to have a, a, an organization in the fact that where I can be a shelter, you know, a physical shelter mm -hmm. where I can give girls a place to stay. They are comfortable. They can sleep. Uh, they are loved without expectation, they are being fed, they are being clothed, they are being educated, a center, having teachers on board, voluntary teachers, because, you know, I don't have money to pay anyone now, mm -hmm. but I know God is faithful to mm -hmm. finish that which he has started. I want to see this NGO, not just in Trinidad, but Tobago, um, you know, having something in all the Caribbean countries called We Are One. Mm -hmm. We have seen that with the past hurricane season. We are one. One fall, it's like a domino effect. I want to be on board helping build back society, building the character of a woman, helping her find her place even at a very young age, starting in her home. No, I'm not allowing this. No, I'm going to tell on this. Tell somebody. Tell someone. I want to be the ear to those who people say, I don't want to hear you. I've given you enough chance. When I look back as a believer and as a minister of the gospel, God has given me several chances. So I want this NGO to be like a safe house. At the end of the day, a place where women can come and have a second chance. Even a, I want to go as far as having a place where women with children, you know, I have two children, three children, I have nowhere to go. I'm speaking from experience. I came out of prison and I had nowhere to go. 
My pastor took me and blessed God the day I walked out of prison with my one daughter. And God bless her soul. But how many other pastors can do that? Some of them are not even in a position. They want to, but they can't. And how long will they tolerate it for? God was good to me. I got a place a few months after, and within the six to seven months, and right next door to my pastor's home. So, you know, I want to see women of transformation really being a safe house for young girls and women within now and the next two to three years. Not just I, saying change, but doing change. I want you to send a message to the critics. And when I say the critics, you know, they are those who, they have no heart. You, you're being labeled an ex-convict. Mm -hmm. You're outside here. And as far as they're concerned, you're just another ex-convict trying to maybe pull a wool over somebody to live a good life, right? Because as you said earlier, a lot of us don't have that forgiveness in us. Mm -hmm. And any one of us, including myself, could end up, could have been in prison because yes. we have all done something that wasn't right. Some of us just didn't get caught. True. Right? So true. And where you got caught and you saved your time, you're out of prison. But some of us are still in prison because we ain't get caught yet and we're living with that guilt. Yes. What would you tell them? Well, George, I will tell the viewing public right now. If you're a believer, I should not have to speak very long to you, for forgiveness is key to the believer. You cannot enter. You know, Paul said, you can do everything, but without charity, you do nothing. And I'm not saying this to get a big donation. I'm going to do it because if God called me to do a work, he will equip me with the tools. Mm -hmm. So that's for the believer. I don't have to talk long for the believer. But for the naysayers, and if you're not a believer and you're viewing this for the first time and you're hearing, I want you to look into your heart and look at your neighbor daughter and remember the words that it takes a village to grow a child. We have stepped aside from that and say, not me, that is the neighbor daughter. But there's a saying, if the neighbor house on fire, wet yours. Mm -hmm. Don't spit on a windy day, don't judge. Crime, it's a very thin line. You break a traffic ticket and you don't pay it in time and you don't show up for court, there's a warrant put out for you. You go down to prison, you take a taxi and they drive, there's a roadblock and the car have marijuana. They don't want to hear you're a passenger. They see you laughing with the driver. Innocent you going to prison for something you didn't do. Do not judge, but instead get involved. Let's make TNT better. Don't look at the girls on Facebook, the young girls fighting and putting in your mouth. Let's do something about it. Women of Transformation is doing something about it. We are getting to the hearts of the girls and the women because there are a lot of big women with little girl behavior because mm -hmm. they didn't get the opportunity to grow up. Mm -hmm. So corporate Trinidad and Tobago, I want you to come on board. Mothers in your home looking, come on board. You have a daughter. You have a sister. You have a neighbor daughter. Be the change you want to see in TNT by coming on board and helping. And for those who want to get in contact with me, because I speak in schools, churches, and congregations, I'm bringing empowerment speeches, bringing my testimony, my number, office number is 237-0067. Again, 237-0067. My mobile, 499-7818, 499-7818. Email address for those who will want to email me privately. It's Ann Williams. Ann Williams TT at gmail.com. Again, Ann Williams TT at gmail.com. Stacey, a fitting way to end this interview. Um, mm -hmm. On behalf of myself and ACTN, we want to really wish you all success. Thank we you. know that you're going to do well. We know that the people who will come in contact with you, lives will be changed. Thank so, you. again, thanks very thanks much for, for sharing this time with George. us. And we here at ACTN. We'll do our best to assist you in any way possible. Thank you. I receive it. Well, viewers, we have come to the end of another edition of Come Corner here on ACTN. We were speaking to Stacey Ann Beckers, the Director of Women of Transformation, a new NGO. And as you heard, um, great things are happening. And this is an organization where if you put your money, it will be used for the right reason. Uh, there is an account number at, um, on the screen from Republic Bank. There's phone numbers, so you can get in touch with Stacey and at any of those um, numbers. Thank you for staying with us. Remember, there's a repeat of this program on Saturdays at 6.30. Stay tuned. There is always something positive on ACTN.
आप व्यस्त भी करें